ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Okay, I want to talk about this young Miami Carisha situation. I'm Carisha, please. As y'all know, she did an interview with Sassy Santander. Santana, whatever his name is, Saucy Tan Santana. So she did an interview with him. And y'all know I don't like Carisha. That's not a secret. I'm not a fan of hers. I just didn't like the way she kept piping up the diddler. Um, I've never been a fan of Diddy. So even when they got together, I wasn't too much worried about them dating because she's grown, right? You know what I'm saying? She's 28, he's 105, whatever, right? She's a grown woman. And I'm like, you know, hell, if, if that's something that can help her situation and get her into certain doors, then do you. But understand that he's not going to marry you. He's not going to have you be one of his chosen baby mamas. You know, just enjoy for what the fuck it is. But then she tried to act like she was the main one. She was online fighting with people and, you know, threatening to make deep Diddy essay other women. She was just doing a bit too much. And so when I seen that she was taking, you know, the status of being one of Diddy's girls to her head, that's when I got turned off of Carisha. That's when I was like, Carisha, bitch, please. Okay, you're doing a bit too much for Mr. Old Ass Peen and Balls, okay? So she decided to do an interview um, on Revolt TV, funny enough, right? And so she's doing an interview with Saucy Santana. And it was very interesting. So we're going to watch the interview. Um, I went ahead and I broke down parts of it. So we're going to all watch it together. I might pause it in between. Go ahead and get it set up here. Now, and I'm going to say this. I watched the full thing. Because I think that you have to watch stuff in context. If you, even if you don't like the individuals involved, you need to watch the full context, right? And I will say... <clears throat> me being as unbiased as I can, because I went into it, I don't like her. I had my tiny violin ready. Let me pull it out the case. I had my violin ready, okay? You know what I mean? Like, I was ready to rock out. But I will say this. For somebody who keeps a tiny violin on their desk and who does not like Carisha, I did enjoy the interview. I did think she was being pretty honest about everything, and I like the fact that Saucy Santana, okay, Mr. Work, he was actually asking some real questions. He was asking some real questions as a friend. He wasn't just letting stuff slide. I did like their dynamic, the, you know, the kind of back and forth. I thought I, I walked away like it wasn't too bad, right? Thank you, oh my can. It wasn't too bad. I thought she did pretty good. And y'all, I don't like her. So I have no dog in this fight. So I went in ready to like, you know, drag, you know what I'm saying, by the by the hair weave and shit. But I'm like, okay, this isn't bad. You're actually being honest. I thought she was just going to be up there crying tattooed tears and shit. So we're going to play some clips that, you know, that I put together from the interview. We're going to watch it. And then we're going to talk about it here. So let's go ahead and share my screen. Give me just a second here. All right, Miss Carisha, please, is in the building. So we're going to go ahead and watch this together. And if y'all feel the need to pull out your tiny violins, feel free. Okay. So we're just going to listen to this. What's going on? Like, we ain't even going that route. So that was my experience. Yeah. So a lot, of the, a lot of the things that people really, like, say about him, you didn't experience that as in dating. That's not something that you saw. So is that the reason why? You never said anything. Is that the reason why when all of these allegations and lawsuits came apart, like, why didn't you speak? Because I can't speak on something that wasn't my experience. And I can't speak on something that I don't know. I can't speak on these allegations because I wasn't around at the time. I don't know that person and that wasn't my experience. So with you being, I feel like, a survivor of domestic violence, he never hit you in a relationship. He was never violent. It was that something that you had to tolerate, or that just that that wasn't a that wasn't a part of you know because I feel like that's the biggest thing to him right now is 
you know, what he's going through in these lawsuits and, you know, that video that came out. And it's like, I feel like a lot of people are wondering, was that your experience? And I know personally that you've been through domestic violence before, and I don't think that's something that, I know that's something that you've grown from and that you don't tolerate. I've been through domestic violence in two relationships. And mm -hmm. I told myself, after the second relationship, I would never put myself in that situation again, especially now being that I'm a mom. I'm a mom. I was a mother then, but I have my daughter. Like, I would never put myself in that position. I don't stand for domestic violence. I'm just not going for that. So do you feel like with dating and dating, like, was it a business relationship? Do you feel like it was beneficial for you? I feel like it was beneficial for both of us. Mm -hmm. I think that, like, you know, I was able to come and be a brand ambassador for that Leon and take it to a whole nother, le a whole nother level because I feel like, I won't say nobody wasn't drinking that Leon, but... Nobody wasn't drinking that Leon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me pause it right there. So, I do believe her when she said that that wasn't her experience. Why? Because let's keep it real. She's getting the so-called, quote-unquote, somewhat healed version of Diddy. Even though Diddy was beating on Gina and some of the other women, Carisha is a celebrity. So, he's going to, and she already had built her own little base and everything else. And Carisha's hood. She's from Miami. She's loud. She's uncouth. So if he would have treated her in the same way as a Cassie, it wouldn't have ended good for Diddy. Because, see, a lot of these dudes know who to play these games with and who not to. See, Cassie always had a more demure, quiet personality. So it's very hard to read her. She was one of those types, be seen and not heard. Carisha's not that type. So for her, I believe that she did get a different type of Diddy. Unlike Gina and Cassie and the others. Because remember, J-Lo, even back then when Diddy was super evil, remember Gene Deal and everybody said that he never put hands on J-Lo. The same way he put hands on Misa and on Kim. Why? Because J-Lo was also an A-lister. So if he would have treated J-Lo in the same way that he treated Kim and Misa, who most people didn't know. They just knew they were Diddy baby mamas. Right? It, it was a whole different story. So I, I believe her when she's saying that. I don't think Diddy you know, put hands on her. Now, I think he had her doing some freaky shit, bitch, because I ain't forgot them white uh, fingernails that you had not too long ago, okay? She's wearing that white nail polish, just like Cassie was saying. I do believe she was involved in a lot of sexual shit with Diddy, but as far as physical violence, I believe that Diddy knew who he could punch in the back of the head and who he couldn't, okay? And I also believe that he went into that relationship. A fair trade ain't no robbery. Let's keep it real. Diddy's old, um, been around since the, you know, I don't know, the 80s. Um, you know, like in music and stuff. Carisha at the time was hot. You know, the city girls were popping. You know, he wants to be able to tap in with the youth. So what better way to tap in with the youth than to get with a, a, a popping, you know, up and coming female rapper who has a personality? Because one thing Carisha does have is a personality. So I believe they were both using each other. And I said that. He's using her for her youth. She's young. You know, she's, a, you know, a young thing on his arm. He's trying to look more pro-black. Remember, in 2020, he was Mr. Woke. So he can't pop up with another Asian chick publicly. He can't pop up with another Latina publicly. So let me pop up with this young black girl from the hood. So that why I look good to, you know, the young black fans. Because remember, he had a baby with an Asian. Nobody knew that Asian lady until the baby was born. So Diddy knows what he's doing, and she was definitely in it for a bag. So we're not going to act like this was just strictly about dick and love. You were definitely in there for a bag. You were definitely in there for status as well, okay? We're going to keep going. <laughs> but when I came, it was just like, it's a city or a summer. We should get Diddy on. We acting bad. So I feel like I was the asset. I honestly just feel like with Diddy, like, you know, I met him at a pee party, and I don't know what his intentions was, but I don't know if it was like business or he really liked me, but I felt like, you know, he, when he got me, he really saw something in me. And that's why he was like, you know what? You got a big personality. Like, mm -hmm. you you can, you should do a podcast. Like, you you know how to engage in conversations. Like, you got, like, you know how to ask good questions. So, mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, I came into his world and I was able to, like, turn everything he had going on up a notch. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he had Delion and I was able to have the whole world drinking Delion, putting in his songs. Like, I made it popular, you know? Yeah. And then... 
with Revolt, I was able to come and make it a number one podcast on Revolt. Yeah. So I felt like, you know, and then with him, it was like he was able to, you know, take my career to the next level. I, I did the Met Gala. I got ready with Revolt. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't going into the relationship thinking, like, I want to get a purse. I want to go on private checks. I want to get yeah, diamonds. Like, I'm I feel like I'm up on a mobile. I want to learn something. You know, like, I want to learn business. I w- now, this is the part where she's capping, okay? Because not one time did you ever get on social media and be like, hey, I'm on my mogul shit. Did he show me how to start a clothing line? You know, I want to be a, a big brand. No, what you did on social media was call everybody broke, tell everybody they were jealous. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that he's taking you on $200,000 a month shopping uh, sprees. So much so that Diddy had to get on The Breakfast Club and basically say, no, he's not giving her $200,000 a month to go shopping. But that, you know, he'll treat her nice and buy her bags and stuff. So that's the part where I do feel like she was capping. She was definitely using this relationship to shit on the public and act like, you know, she really came up. Because up until then, uh, you know, the biggest celebrity she had dated was Southside. Let's keep going. I'm learning how to... Okay, you got a network. How can I get a network? Or you know, you 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 had a Sean John. How can I make Kucha please the next Sean John? So I went into that relationship like on the on the like more of like I want to become a mogul and I want to learn up up under you. You know, those, most people just want to get their body done. They want to get a trip. You want to mm-hmm. just do that video. No, I wasn't one of them. And I, I, that's what I respect them. Okay, you're lying. You were one of them. Again, she sat on social media and bragged about the lifestyle she was living with Diddy and how he was taking her on shopping sprees. And she never talked about anything of substance with this relationship. It was always what he's doing for her and how Diddy, she can make Diddy uh, make other bitches eat her coochie. The, that's the tea that she was giving us on social media. So this... This new tea is very interesting. So we're going to keep going. That's true because even though you a city girl, um, me being your best friend and knowing you, you very womanly. I always say that. And like just a grown woman. And so I even seen the elevation in your production um, and your team that you started hiring business managers. Hello. Hello. And I feel like I, I think that it... I think that, like, when you get around people, you see certain things. Like, you're able to, like, you should be able to learn something for somebody. And I felt like I was able to see, like, how should my business be operating? Like, I should have a chief of staff. Yeah. I should have a business manager. You know, I should have all these things in place. And that's what I was learning. Like, I took that more of, like, a learning experience as far as, like, trying to become a mogul. That's why I'm like, I'm a mogul. I'm a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. I'm not just a rapper. Like, I'm being a rap. And I'll never be the same motherfucker all day. I feel like... Once we go to the internet, that's kind of like a... I, I'm a type of person, like, if we feel some type of way, we can hash this shit. Okay, so this is the part where she's talking about her relationship with JT. Because as we all know, her and JT uh, fell out a few months ago. You know, they're cordial now, but it's never going to be like the original City Girls. Oh, behind closed doors. You could call my phone, we could text each other, we could cuss each other out. But, like, once they go to the internet, I feel like you're trying to get people to pick a side. Mm-hmm. Like, you putting people in our business to pick a side, and I don't fuck with that. Because I feel like we've been friends for so long that if we gonna go to the end there, we gotta air each other dirty laundry. Like, I'm gonna have to say some shit about you, you gonna have to say some shit about me, and people have to pick a side. Mm-hmm. And if we were friends, we ain't going to the end there. I'm not going to the end there, and that's, I felt like, you know, I'm always the one that's gonna let the narrative run and let people think they wanna think and not yeah. clear nothing up. Because it's just, it'll never be that serious to me. Like, I'm, I'm cool, I ain't gotta clear nothing up. So how long behind the scenes have, do you feel like have things been rocky between y'all two? I feel like... Okay, I respect what she's saying here. Because <laughs> she's saying if we're real friends, I'm not going to go to the internet. You know, and people are going to say stuff on the internet, I'm not going to address it because it's not that serious to me. So I can respect her for that. Because only like, like I feel like when people try and take stuff to the internet and they're supposed to be cool with you, it just shows their true character. It shows that they were just trying to use you, use your energy, and that you guys were never really friends. So I say when people take stuff online, let them, you know, let the chips fall where they may. Fuck them. You know what I'm saying? So at this point, Carisha's saying low-key the same thing that she was very hurt about what JT did when she took it to the internet. It's been a minute. It's been a minute since shit been going on behind closed doors. Like, I just feel like we outgrew each other. I feel like she was in LA. I was in Miami. She was been working on her shit. I didn't know. Mm-hmm. 
And I just feel like every time we try to get together, it just didn't hit. So do you feel like distance? Um, you living in Miami, she living in LA. Um, you know, did that play a part in the wedge of y'all two? I don't know. Did y'all go to the studio together? Um, how was you know how was recording because y'all had it. Y'all last album didn't do well, and I feel like even in interviews, y'all weren't in sync. Mm-hmm. And it didn't look like something that just happened. It looked like something that's been occurring. Yeah. I just feel like when we got together, it just wasn't hitting. I just felt like we was in just in two different head spaces. Like the way we dress was different. Like I'm more of I wear a little tie and JT want to wear something covered. So I just felt like whenever we tried to get together, it just didn't connect. Like we'll be on tour. She she got her own dress room. I got my own dress room. She riding with her own glam team. I ride with my own glam team. When we get on the stage and we do our routine, that was probably like the only interaction we had at the time when we was on tour together. So I don't really know like what was the moment that separated us, but I just mm-hmm. felt like it became a time where like when we was getting together, it just wasn't connecting. And I was just like, ain't no money in the group. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we're not going to the studio together. I'm doing a feature. People call it for the city girls. You know, it's either me or it's you. It just wasn't connecting no more. And I just felt like that's what really made me like start my own brand. Like I got to do something because I'm in this group. The group ain't making no money. We not working. So it just became a point where we was just. Now, what I find very interesting about this part, she's basically telling the behind the scenes tea of the city girls. They weren't making no money. They were basically going broke. She had to start her own brand. She had to figure out a way to feed her kids. But yet around this time, they were both on the internet cussing folks out, calling people broke, going in on people's clothes and looks. So again, a lot of these celebs sit online and they front. They know that their shit's not even tight financially, but they want to sit here and project and call everybody else broke. So now we're getting the realty that both of them were going broke. It's like on two different pages. And I felt like whenever we just, just, a video shoot just anything like it just wasn't connecting and I was just like you know what I gotta like figure something out because I do got kids and that's what really made me start doing like ritual land and getting into my merch and things like that because I just felt like the group just wasn't hitting them up basically right now today it's not bad it's not good but do you still feel like you would consider JT a sister yeah, I feel like we grew up together. I, I feel like I'm going to always look at her as family. But again, like everything, not, I'm not going to sit here and just like do that strategic question. How are you? Yeah, you know, that's my sister. We go, no, she ain't all good, but it's not all bad neither. Mm. And I just want to move forward from that. I don't want to have to keep answering that question. It's just what it is. It's nothing going on. We 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 not in the group no more. She went her own way. I went my own way. And that's just what we had. Okay, period. And I want to answer it no more. So don't ask me. Wow. <laughs> okay. So my last question for the smoke. Um, are you still dating Puff Daddy? I'm not. I said I was gonna tell my truth. I think that it, it really, really, really hurt me because I just feel like you know Puff was a really, really good person to me. Yeah, I, feel I like pull out the tiny violins. You know he elevated me and. He saw a lot of things in me. And I feel like that's like one of his specialties. Like, he know how to, like, find people and, you know, identify their talent. And he was able to see more than music. That's what people don't understand about, like, me and Puff relationship. They was just like, you were so loud. And you made you a part of your brand. And, you know, like, you, 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 you just thought that you had something. And it wasn't that. Because I think the same thing with him. Like, he didn't expect to fall in love with me because we did end up falling in love with each other Mm -hmm. and I just feel like you know it's just everything that's going on like I don't want to get caught up in that and I just need a moment to just pour into me nobody called to check on me nobody called to see like how I was feeling like it was really like an eye hollow like oh my god but you thought that you had this nigga you thought that you was going up and I didn't even think anything Mm -hmm. I got with a nigga and I did what I was supposed to do and the nigga was doing what he was supposed to do you know what I'm saying? Like, why would I get with this nigga and just go to Chanel? Mm. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was able to get a podcast and I still got a podcast with and without him. Okay. All right, Carisha. All right, so that's her interview. 
Um, the end, like I said, was to me was kind of BS because I kind of felt like, no, you, you, Carisha, let's keep it real. Child, let me go ahead and share my screen. Carisha, is this you? Who remembers her at the BET Awards looking a damn fool? Holding up that go, Poppy. Hi, Poppy. <laughs> and look at how Uzi's looking at her. JT's just like, ugh. This was you. You were loud with this relationship. You were annoying. You were throwing it in everybody's face. Anybody who was like, okay, you're with fucking bisexual Diddy. Like, enjoy. They were haters. They were broke. You went in on everybody who said anything about this relationship. So you can't get mad that the same people that you were clowning and calling broke and dusty and just mad that they're not in your position, you can't get mad when they decide not to reach out. I'm sorry. We're too broke to reach out and care. You called us broke. You called us haters, which, well, that's fine. I'm going to just keep my dusty, broke, hater ass over here, and you deal with all the backlash that you're dealing with. So like I said, in certain parts of the interview, I really did like it. I felt like she was being very honest. But in other parts, let's keep it real, you put yourself in this position, okay? You were sitting here singing his praises. Remember, she, go poppy, I poppy, 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 pop, 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 okay? And then what did Diddy call her? Oh, that's my shoddy doo-wop. Her? She's, she's holding up signs, bitch. Go poppy, 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 okay? She's holding up signs and shit. And Diddy's like, yeah, that's my shoddy doo-wop. Yeah, the energy is not the same. So people, people are going to laugh. I'm sorry. People are going to laugh. You made yourself look like a fool. You was going way too hard for a man that, bitch, from what we're seeing in these lawsuits, he done had the whole industry, allegedly. They got Meek Mill's name in there, Usher, <laughs> poor Justin Bieber, allegedly. You know, so it's like she was doing a bit much. Shoddy Wap was doing too much. You were cussing out the Asian girl uh, who had his baby. You went off on the other Asian girl. You threatened to make her eat you out. So you were doing way too much. So because of your own antics, that is why people didn't care. That's why when his downfall happened, people drug you into it and made you, you know, and laughed. And let's not forget, you too were named in a lawsuit. They said you, uh, 50 Cent Baby Mama, Daphne Joy, y'all were out here trafficking. Y'all made, you made your cousin uh, forcibly suck that man's peen. He said he didn't want no head from your cousin. And you made your cousin go in that bathroom and suck his peen until he came. That's not right. Allegedly. That's what they said in the lawsuit. I'm just repeating the, the, the lawsuit. Okay? So, yeah, people are going to be kind of standoffish. Because we're hearing that you're a sex trafficker, you're forcing head on people, you're trying to force Diddy to make people give you head, you're just attached to the head game. And it has folks nervous. So people are going to distance themselves. You can't cry tattooed tears now when you was claiming this man loud and proud. So, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, it was a very interesting interview. But I also feel like because it was on Revolt TV, and because Diddy didn't put any hands on her, you know, um, he may have had to do some Tusi or whatever the, the, the pink drug that they were moving per the lawsuit. But, you know, I, I think it was a way to almost help clean up his image a little bit and make Revolt kind of look good because, you know, Diddy owned a fraction in Revolt. They've since distanced themselves from Diddy, right? But a lot of people are like, eh, when I see it, I see Diddy. So I'm not fooling with Revolt. So this is a way to kind of be like, oh, well, even though he was a part of, you know, Revolt, he wasn't that bad because Carisha's singing his praises, you know? But I do agree that she had a different Diddy. I don't think she had the, the Kim Porter Diddy. I don't think she had the Cassie Diddy or the Misa Diddy. I think she had a different Diddy. And that is because of Carisha's persona. She doesn't know how to shut the fuck up. And she, if he was putting hands on her and, you know, doing all types of crazy stuff, she would have took it to social media. So he knew, I don't think he was changed. I just think that he knew not to do certain things to Carisha that he was doing to, to Gina Hun and the other girls. You know, so I just hope from this, you know, um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what, I mean, I don't know if she's going to drop an album, just, you know, do podcasting. 
But I'm glad that she got to speak, you know, her truth that she sees it because she's allowed to, you know, speak her truth and speak about her situation. So I am glad that she did do that. And I thought I thought Saucy did pretty good. I thought he asked her some decent questions. You know what I'm saying? As a friend, I you know, I enjoyed the interview. I thought it was it was decent, but I'm still going to clock her tea at certain parts. There were certain parts of the interview that to me was just, you know, full of crap. And I'm not going to act like all of a sudden this man is just so changed. No, he's changed towards you, but not towards others. And then on top of that, like I said, you know, she can't get mad because nobody reached out to her in sympathy. Because again, you had no sympathy for anybody else. Anybody says anything to you, you're dragging them. She's the same person uh, when her and Armand got into it, she was saying that YouTubers are broke and all this other stuff and you're just a broke blogger. So, you know, she loves saying that. But now we're finding out that her and JT weren't, weren't living that trife life. So, very interesting. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.